So this video, we're gonna fast forward a little bit. We're gonna go into 2021. I had quit doing drugs, I had quit drinking, I had quit smoking cigarettes, quit everything. The only thing that I was doing was vaping. Vaping quite a bit. From the second I woke up in the morning till the second I went to bed, I was vaping. If I was driving, I was vaping. If I was on the bus, I was getting off and vaping. If I was at work, I was in the bathroom vaping. I was on break vaping, just nonstop. I, at first I was able to buy these like little cheap uh, vape pens. They were um, the puff bars, if you guys are familiar with the puff bars. So usually a puff bar should give you like two days use. I was going through the puff bars in like a few hours. So then I started getting like the real um, uh, big ones. What was it called? Um, bang yeah yeah bang if you guys remember the bang ones and then they came out with the bang it was like the double flavor where it had a, um, a notch where you could flip the notch and it would be berry flavor and if you flip the notch to the other side it would be like watermelon so a lot of my vaping was i like the flavor um <clears throat> sorry i gotta burp so yeah a lot of the vaping was i like the flavor i like the way it tastes and it gave me something to do. It occupied my time. So if I was bored, I could vape. If I was nervous, I could vape. It was, you know how like a baby has their baby blanket and they, you know, they hold it on their face. That's sort of like the way vaping was for me. It was sort of like my blanket because I had quit everything else. And I didn't feel bad about it. There would be other people. I remember the pastor of my church he had given me this big lecture about vaping. You're spending so much money. How much are you spending a day? Oh, $20 a day. You know, giving me this big lecture. Well, my, my pastor didn't know me when I was junked out. It's like, you're trying to tell me to quit vaping? You have no clue what I used to do. I used to do this, this, this. Vaping is the least of my problems, okay? So I never considered vaping that big of a deal. But I was, I was always praying about it. I'd always be like, God, I don't feel like this is bad, but if it is bad, please tell me, because if it's bad, I'll quit. And that was my prayer a lot of the times, because deep down inside, I had this guilt about vaping, but I didn't really feel bad about it because I knew of all the bad stuff that I had done before, and I knew that vaping wasn't anything close to what I used to be involved in. So, and it's a constant prayer. A, a lot of the reason why it was a constant prayer is because I would wake up in the morning and I would feel good. I'd have lots of energy. I would start vaping. I'd still feel fine. You know, great. It's sort of like you have your cigarette and a cup of coffee in the morning, you know, to get going. That's the way it was with me. I'd have my energy drink and I'd have my vape, you know, and it'd be fine. But then after a couple hours, it just sucked my energy and I almost looked at as my vaping grew not, not in the beginning but as my vaping grew I kind of looked at the vape as something that I enjoy doing but I also looked at it as an energy zapper so I knew once I started really heavily getting on the vape my energy levels would be depleted um, and I didn't like that another thing that I didn't like about vaping was I didn't like feeling that something had a grip on me. I felt like if I didn't, cause if, cause if like, let's say I didn't have a vape or I went, um, so there was a certain store that I bought them from. That store closed at I think eight o'clock. So if I ran out at 10 at night, I knew that store wasn't open. And so they didn't, only that certain store, only the certain store sold the kind that I, that I vaped. It was the flume, the Skittles flavor my favorites they, they taste really good and that was a good th that was the thing about vaping is I like the taste I like the flavor they were so good it was just you know like the last thing I had it wasn't something that's gonna cost you your job vaping is not gonna put you in jail you're not going to um, get arrested for vaping you know so it, it never felt that big of a deal to me
and like I said, it was a constant prayer. Like God, you know, if if this isn't right, you know, I'm, I'm my ears are open. I'm not closing my ears off and doing what I want to do. I want to I want to do what you want me to do, God. So if you feel like vaping is wrong, my ears are open. I'm listening. Let's go. I never heard anything. So I continue vaping, but it starts getting worse. Like I start needing more. So the flumes, the flumes used to last me like three days. Well, now these flumes, and I think they were $12 at the place that I was buying them at. Now the flumes are only lasting me one day. Buy them in the morning, they're, they're done by the end, end of the night. So I start noticing that um, instead of buying one for $12 and it lasting three days, now it's an actual $12. And now I'm like, well, that's more than a pack of cigarettes. You know, that's, that's a lot. And so I was contemplating going and buying one of those vapes where you fill up the juice and then when, when it's done, you just, you add more juice. I never got to that point. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what happened. So like I said, it was a constant prayer. Um, and if you notice the the flumes if you've ever um vaped the flumes if you go into the store they are like the shiniest brightest um coolest looking vapes usually in the store um they look almost ceramic you know they got the nice packaging um it's it's shaped like a like a like a big co2 cartridge and it's shiny and it's got cool colors they're really nice and they taste good so it's a good product so i'm at church uh wait give me a second what was it yeah so i'm at church and there there's this revival going on the church had been talking about it for a while um, so in, in Oceanside, they have this amphitheater. It's right on the beach. If you've ever been, if you've ever been to Oceanside, there's an amphitheater. Back in the nineties, they had the, um, the world skateboard competition there. It's still on YouTube. You can check it out. And this amphitheater, it's stadium seating goes up and then there's a big stage and behind the stage is the Pacific ocean. So it's a really cool place. And Oceanside is very Christian friendly, very church friendly. There's a lot of churches in Oceanside. Um, my mother's from Oceanside. She got saved in Oceanside. There's always been a big uh, Christian presence in Oceanside. A lot of churches there, a lot of good churches. Um, so the pat I'm the, at the time this was during COVID. Oops. At the time this was during COVID, and um, church was being done outdoors, but my church was, we met at, at the pastor's house and we actually uh, met outdoors, but we weren't outdoors because of COVID. We we're just outdoors because that was where the most space was at. But um, yeah, so I was going to an indoor house church uh, during COVID. But anyway, so the pastor, his name was uh, Pastor Jim. Pastor Jim says, so there's going to be a outreach, uh, a worship night at the amphitheater and everybody from the church is welcome to go. I said, cool. And what was it? Oh yeah. Jesus culture. That's right. Jesus culture was going to be there. And Kim Walker Smith of Jesus culture is like my favorite singer. One of my, used to be my favorite singer. I have another, a different one now, but at the time, Kim Walker Smith was my favorite worship singer. So I wanted to go down and see Jesus culture. And I wanted to go down and support the other Christians down there. Well, on the day of the whatever the revival worship experience whatever you want to call it the day of that i wasn't feeling like going there was something going on like i was i was doing a lot of online dating and having a lot of failures like i was on upward the christian dating site and i was on um what's the other one it was another christian dating site um and there was just a lot of spam a lot of people pretending to be people that they weren't just a lot of bots and then the dates that I was going on um, you know we would talk for so long and then when we met up in person it would just be something completely different or I would be attracted in the pictures and then we'd meet up and I wouldn't be attracted in person or the same thing like you know they thought I was somebody and then they didn't like me 
And so things just weren't working out. And this was an ongoing thing. I'll do another video about my online dating, but online dating was just not going good. So I was I was really depressed about the, the whole dating situation. I had been praying for a wife, praying for a girlfriend, praying for um, my relationship status to change. And it seemed like every time something was going good with somebody, it exploded and just didn't work out. So that was bothering me. So I think that it's hard to remember like exactly what was going on, but I know that was about the time that I was doing uh, the online dating. So yeah, so I'm having a rough day and I had actually forgot about um, the worship night at the beach. So I want to say it was around noontime. Somebody called or texted me and said, hey, um, we're going to be going down to the beach. Are you coming? And I said, yeah, but I still wasn't sure that I was going. Throughout the day, oh yeah, so it started at five o'clock. This is what happened. So it started at five. And I think it ended at like nine. So like between like five and six was kind of the time that you wanted to get there. And I remember not wanting to go and not planning on going. But there was this energy. It was so strange that was pulling me to this worship concert. And I didn't want to go. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, is this real? What is going on? I'm like, God, is that you? Do you want me to go to this? It's just, this is weird. And I'm driving and I'm making like a left-hand turn. I'm making a right-hand turn. I am driving myself down to the beach. Like, but I'm not trying to drive. It's almost like it's almost like a somebody else came into my body and took control of the wheel and like drove me there and I was like just a robot you know just going there it was so weird I remember being like what is going on like why am I going down here okay so I get there I'm like all right God here I am you know this is just strange day I was in my car, I parked in the parking garage and, um, and I had my vapes and I remember like whenever I was around Christians and whenever I was around the church, I always hid my vapes because <laughs> I didn't want nobody uh, seeing my vape. And the reason why is because they'd always talk crap to me oh, or they'd always look at me like, oh, or you need prayer, you know, it's like stuff like that. So I didn't like Christians knowing that, that I was vaping. So I hid all my vapes and I brought one with me, but oh, and when I when I got close to the beach, I wasn't vaping because I was afraid that somebody from the the church or one of the church members might see me. So when I got close to the beach, I didn't vape at all. So I took I had two vapes. I had one in this pocket and one in this pocket, and I put them in my pocket. And I remember that day I was wearing a big sweatshirt. So it covered my pockets. So if you wanted, if you looked at me, there's no way you would be able to see an indentation of a vape at all. So I put them in my pocket and I, from the parking garage to the worship thing was like, probably like a 10 minute walk. So my, the whole walk there, I'm not vaping because I don't want anybody, I don't want to come in contact with anybody that's going to see me vaping. So... I walk and um, I get down there, you know, and, it, and it's great. It's, it's exactly what I expected. Worship going on. Um, and so this guy gets on the mic and he starts prophesizing like there's somebody that's got like a broken leg or I, I don't know, just certain things like, you know, we're praying for this. We're praying for this. We're praying for this. And I, I believe in all this, right? I do believe in all this. But at this time during this day, I didn't want anybody to pray for me. So what I did is I kind of hung out in a corner and whenever there was people like going around um, trying to pray for people, I moved away so that I wouldn't have to come in contact with anybody because I just wanted to, I, I was here because I felt like God wanted me to be here, but I just wanted to go and I just wanted to leave because I just, like I said, I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I'm there and I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, all right, God, this is it. Yeah, you know, I praise God. I, I like this. I like the music. This is good, you know, but it's almost time for me to go. And so, um, you know, and there's people going around praying for people. And I'm avoiding them like the plague, moving around. And, um, 
And then out of nowhere, somebody comes, taps me on the shoulder, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. And it's this guy, and he's with his like 11 year old kid. He's like, hi, my name's Mark. And I saw you standing here, and me and my son wanted to pray for you. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I didn't want to happen, right? And so I was not going to be rude to this guy and his son. Um, I've prayed for people. I believe in prayer. Like I have the other video where I where I got healed miraculously by Jesus. So I, I'm totally cool with prayer. But there, like I said, during this day, I just wanted to be left alone. But anyways, he's here. His son, they want to pray for me. And he says, is there anything we can pray for you about? And I said, yes. I said, actually, there is. I said, um... I said, I am, at the time I was on the Suboxone pill and I was getting ready to go to the Sublocade shot. And so I was a little worried about how moving from the pill to the shot was going to be. And so I said, yes, I said, I do need prayer. I said, um, I said, I'm getting ready to switch medications and you know, I, that would be cool if you could pray for me about that. He's like, sure, sure, sure. So him and his son, they, they lay hands on me and they pray. And um, it was great. It was a good prayer. I was happy, you know, that, that they prayed for him. And then after they get done praying for me, he says, you, you know, Timothy, he says, you know, we prayed for you. He says, but that's not really what we wanted to pray for you about. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, he said, uh, I was standing over there and I was looking at you and God showed me something. I'm like God showed you. I'm I'm ears here here. Yeah, tell me. I'm I'm interested. What what did God tell you, right? And he says, so he says, uh, God showed me that you were. God is trying. This is what he said. Sorry, God is trying to give you something. God wants to give you something. He says, but he can't give it to you because you're holding on to something. And he says, I don't know what it was, he said, but it was shiny like brass. And he wants you to take whatever's in your hand that's shiny like brass and let it go so he can give you something. And I'm just like, look at my phone. My phone is shiny. I'm like, my phone, what is, what is this guy talking about? Shiny like brass, my phone. I, and I'm just like, okay, you know, great. And so um, that was it. And I kind of wanted to get away. He wants to talk more, but I'm kind of just, I want to just get away. And so I walked back to my car. I'm like shiny like brass in my hand. God wants to give me something, but he can't give me something because there's something that's in my hand and it's shiny like brass. I'm like, what is he? I'm like my vape, my vape's always in my hand. I'm like my vape. I'm like shiny like brass. The flume is like the shiniest <laughs> the shiniest vape that they make I'm like oh my gosh he was just talking about the vape I'm like I've been praying about that stupid vape I'm like wait a minute and I'm thinking I'm like okay I'm like if God just showed him a vision and God's trying to give me something but he can't because vaping is in the way I'm like vaping is not that important to me and so I had been praying that God like reveal to me if, if vaping, if he wanted me to stop vaping. So I'm like, okay, if this is from God, which it is for sure, this guy, he'd never met me in my life. He didn't know about my vaping problem and me always vaping and, you know, and the flume, you know, being like, I used to do the puff bar, which was not shiny doll, but you know, the flume was like the shiny one. And uh, he didn't know which kind of vape I smoked. I never met this guy in my life. So I'm like, wow, that was incredible. And the whole time I'd felt something pulling me uh, to get there. So I was like, man, this is, this is kind of nuts. So I'm like, okay, God, I was praying about this. I feel like this is you. Um, you answer my prayer about the whole vaping thing. I went to my car. And I grabbed all the vapes I could find. You know, sometimes I would leave them um, in the center console or by the door. Sometimes, like it, the thing with the vapes, if you if if they're empty, but you 
you let them sit for a couple weeks in an emergency you can still take them again and they'll like recharge themselves and you can get like five six seven puffs out of it so that's what i used to do i used to leave them laying around so that they would recharge themselves um yeah and i had so many i probably had like 30 of them i took all of them and i was thinking should i take one one last puff i'm like no i'm not even taking one last puff i'm like if god is that serious about this vaping thing i'm like then it's going to be serious to me too so i get all my vapes i bring them all to the trash can i was like no should i give them to somebody i'm like no and i threw them all away and that was the last time i ever vaped and i'll tell you what since then um at the at the time that this happened i was living i i had a car wait was did i have a car then i had my mercedes i had an old mercedes i'm trying to think did i get my new car after that no i think i had i don't remember but um after i threw those away my life i was living with my mom i ended up moving out of my mom's house getting my own place my business ended up taking off um my body became way healthier i play a lot of basketball and um my recovery time sped up like i would play basketball and then i have to recover for a few days well after i quit the vaping i was like recovering in one day like getting back able to play a lot faster and my whole life lots of little things everything kind of changed uh, right after that and in the bible if you if you read the bible a lot of times when god blessed people in the bible it was from sacrifices or from being obedient so when when you're obedient uh to god not saying you do for god he's gonna do for you but he does sometimes it does happen i don't think that's the way you should live your life oh i'm gonna do this for god because he's gonna do this for me i don't think that's where you should live your life but sometimes god does do things like that because he's god and he can do whatever the heck he wants to do and he loves his children and if you read the bible the most important thing is believing he wants his children to believe if there's unbelief he gets he gets mad he he he, he likes belief so to be obedient to god is to believe in him and to believe in him is to be transformed and to try to be like Jesus and live the live accordingly uh, to scriptures and and that's the way that that God wants everybody to live. Um, you can you can still get to heaven. You can you can still do bad things. You can still get to heaven. Um, no, stop quitting bad things is not what's going to get you to heaven. But life gets a lot easier when you put the bad things away. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, it changed my life, the whole quitting vaping thing. Maybe, um, maybe this will help with whatever you're going through. Palabra.